maybe 10 percent. It is a surgical um, instrument almost. drone is moving uh, uh, 150 kilometers per hour. It's uh, extremely difficult to, uh, to hit uh, uh, it by uh, gun. You can hit uh, drone only from the distance uh, 30 to, uh, from 30 to 50 meters. And uh, it is also dangerous. Every shelter is uh, better than don't have it uh, because uh, for the drone operator is uh, more difficult uh, to operate uh, in forest or inside buildings. Of course, you can fly from from the window if uh, it's, uh, for example, 50 centimeters on 50 centimeters uh, square. You'll hear stories on both sides where soldiers are just um, trapped in in basements. They can't leave for for days on end. You know, if there are drones outside. Jammers has uh, two limitations. It's uh, frequencies and uh, power uh, of jammer. You can jam um, a lot of the frequencies that these drones operate on, but you, you can't jam all of the spectrum all of the time. You'll jam your own drones, you'll jam your own communications if you're not careful. There are quite disturbing reports on both sides of soldiers returning to the front and just hearing sounds that resemble a drone, you know, like a, a distant hedge trimmer or something and, and basically being re-traumatized. They can cause panic in the ranks when drones are heard. Often soldiers will shoot down a, one of their own drones because they just panic, they don't know whose it is. They will jam drones, their own drones. It's called panic jamming. That's how common it is. It's very difficult to say exactly how the lessons from Ukraine's battlefield will translate for NATO in a future peer conflict. I think anyone who tells you they know exactly how drones are going to influence the next war might be a bit dishonest.